lives are on the line, here is what you'll need. Let's dig into this. So I'm not normally the person to really uh, hammer the sharing thing and asking you guys a whole bunch of times to share stuff, though it is appreciated. But today in this video, I'm making a little bit special, a little bit more serious video. And so I do ask and highly recommend that you guys share this video just so that you can spread the word about some helpful fail safes to have for the outdoors, whether you're a hunter, hiker, bushcrafter, survivalist, whatever. If you find yourself out in the woods, a lot. Here are my top four recommendations or fail safes to have so that you can have the most uh, fun and the best adventures that you make it back alive on. So without any further ado, let's actually look at this. So before we get too far into this, I do also want to mention that I do have Amazon links for everything you're going to see here or the closest representations I can get for everything you're going to see here. So starting this list off with number one, and I'm uh, kind of basically logging this from most important to least important. The first thing is an IFAC. This is a very important part of your um, kit to have, and an IFAC or some type of heavy duty, serious um, first aid kit. We're not talking about bandaging little cuts or scrapes or anything non-serious. We're talking about something that is rated for life-threatening issues. And the reason why this is number one on the list is because if you have a life-threatening issue where you have a deep cut that's bleeding out, or if you have a life-threatening allergic reaction, these are things that before you could hit a PLB, before you could even worry about a survival situation, you'll likely already be dead. So these are the types of things that you must have uh, taken care of and ready. Now this is my expansive IFAC, and my ultimate recommendation for you is to buy a solid IFAC that you can get, like I said, I have a link in the description below for one, um, but you just want a good general purpose uh, IFAC. This one has a uh, cat tourniquet in it, which is right here. It also has some combat gauze by Quick Clot, um, you know, different things like Israeli bandages and all that type of fun stuff for deep, serious cuts that could be life-threatening. Also, in addition to that, like I mentioned with the whole um, allergic reactions. I'm also carrying an EpiPen. Now I understand these are prescription only, but if you know you're going out into the woods with someone or if you know you have a life-threatening allergic reaction, having an EpiPen is very important. I know um, I adventure with my wife very frequently and she can have very bad reactions to hornets and wasp stings that can turn life-threatening. So I like to have a EpiPen in here for that and also I like to have it just in case I go out with someone else and they end up having a life-threatening um, <clears throat> issue transpire, then you can hit them with the EpiPen and that should at least stop it um, from being life-threatening. Now, once again, you may have to use a personal locator beacon, which we'll talk about, <clears throat> which is another piece of kit we'll talk about here in a little bit, but this is the first step. Again, this IFAC is not just something that I bought commercially and, you know, put in my backpack or something like that. I paid attention and made sure that I got specialized equipment that complemented the IFAC for emergencies. So that's my number one uh, item to have on the top four fail safes for the outdoors. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at number two of my top four fail safes for the outdoors. And this is a personal survival kit. So we talked about an individual first aid kit. This is a PSK or personal survival kit. Now, what's in the PSK is going to be highly dependent on what your environment looks like, what your needs are for survival. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a personal survival kit, which covers at least the five C's of survivability. Your combustion, your cover, your container, your cutlery, and your cordage. So that's the minimum that it's going to cover, but also some other good things to add is things like water purification tablets, um, multiple forms of ignition or combustion, uh, signaling things such as um, a signaling mirror, which you guys can see there, and a whistle. Um, you're definitely going to want to have a well-rounded kit. 
and even having a little bit of a mini uh, first aid kit is what this is in particular, but having some different things is going to be really nice because if you do find yourself in a non-life threatening survival situation, your IFAC is great to have, but this is going to cover you for long term, i.e. when you have to sit there and hunker down for the night, it's going to provide you cover, it's going to provide you fire, it's going to provide you warmth, food is even another good thing to add to this just so that your survival situation isn't as severe as it has. I'm going to talk about, and I'm just going to leave this here for just a good cover thing. I'm going to bring in the Garmin GPS. Uh, so the first thing I don't necessarily have, or, so this next part, I unfortunately don't have one to show you, but I'm going to roll in some images of it, and it is a PLB. And these come in many different forms, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the Rescue Link ACR, which is the one that I, my top preferred one, but it doesn't have to be that one. The Garmin in reach is another great one. And either way, regardless to what personal locator beacon or uh, emergency signaling device, whatever you want to call it, whichever one you choose, I highly recommend you have one of these because once again, if you are in a life-threatening situation or if you're lost, you really are completely lost, you don't know where you are, having a PLB is a nice thing because what it will do, uh, whether it's a Garmin inReach or like I said, a rescue link by ACR, what it does is it contacts your uh, local first responders, your search and rescue, your civil air patrol. It alerts these different uh, departments that you're stranded, you don't know where you are, and you need help being rescued and searched. And the nice thing is, unlike having someone call into the police for you saying, hey, you know, this person didn't show up, they're in this general approximated 140 mile radius or whatever. What's nice about the personal locator beacon is it's actually pinging uh, your exact location. And what I like about the uh, Rescue Link Plus by uh, ACR is the fact that it's buoyant and it's waterproof. Now we're going to take a look at one more piece of equipment that I kind of like to call preventative maintenance as opposed to a save your butt kind of thing. This is more of preventing anything bad from happening in the first place. Now this is a GPS of course and I'm not necessarily going to say run out and buy this this is particular one is the Garmin <clears throat> Organ 650T and I'm not gonna say go run out there and buy an Organ 650T because this is the best but simply having a really good preferably like this one topographical a GPS is really nice because what a GPS can allow you to do is if you find yourself starting to not know your way starting to get into unfamiliar territory well before you get too far lost or too far gone into it you can pull out your GPS and then actually get your bearings and realize, okay, I'm right here and the trailhead is right over yonder, wherever, you know. And so it allows you to get your bearings correct and say, hey, I'm right here. I need to divert my course and go that way. And so what ultimately the nice thing about having a good GPS that's reliable, that's accurate, and that's usable is it allows you to prevent yourself from getting into a type of survival situation where you would be lost where you don't know where you're at now like I said this doesn't necessarily prevent you from getting stranded if say your boat runs out of gas on a river and you know you're stuck on an island your GPS won't necessarily help you there but if you're traveling in the backwoods and you're in some unfamiliar environment or terrain and you don't necessarily know where you're at the GPS can help prevent you from getting too far into the woods or too far into the wilderness where you really don't know where you're at. So this is more of a preventative uh, survival aid or fail safe. But the reason why I wanted to include a GPS is just for the fact that what it can allow you to do is prevent you from getting lost in the first place. And I think that above having, you know, PSK to help survive, you know, your time out in the woods, if you are lost or in a survival situation or above having, you know, a personal locator be 
beacon that will send people to your aid if you need it. The best thing to do is just avoid all of that altogether and just not get lost in the first place by using a GPS. So I'm not going to say the GPS is perfect. Obviously these things run on batteries and you know this isn't as waterproof as a rescue link uh, by ACR. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and ultimately I do highly encourage you guys to share this video around, at least get you guys some ideas of what to have for fail safes. I like to do these videos so that you guys can stay safe and have fun in the wilderness because ultimately the woods are meant to be enjoyed and it's supposed to be fun when you go out into the woods and not a survival situation even though that may be what we practice for we hope we never have to get into survival situations anyways guys that is my top four fail safes as always god bless and i'm out